I'm very pleased to welcome one of the great books of Ireland, the Book of Lismore, back to Ireland, to Cork, its county of origin, almost five centuries ago. So this is the book of the McCarthy's, Laur na Macorig Reivach. But it's also the book of Kilbritain. It's the book of Tim League. It's the book of Lismore. It's the book of Cork. And it's the book of Chatsworth. And it's also now the book of University College Cork. It's a, it's a remarkable manuscript. It was created for the Lord of Carberry, Finian Macorig Reivach, who lived here in Kilbritain Castle, where we're standing today. It was, it's a book of learning, it's a book of piety, it's a book that concerns kingship and how, how rulers should behave themselves, but above all else it's a book of entertainment. The book has been in the care of the Devonshire family for many years, and happily it will now be in the care and preserved by the Library of University College Cork for students and researchers and future generations to come. It begins with the lives of the saints, saints of the saints of Ireland, and goes on to European texts of a religious nature also. And then it, it branches out, if you like, into the exotic texts, particularly the life of uh, and travels of Marco Polo. And I suppose the standout text towards the very end of the manuscript is the, the great prose text of, of late medieval Ireland, Ogle of Nishanorach. I wish to express my heartfelt thanks to Duke and your family, and your trustees. Since its establishment, 175 years ago, this university has worked successfully with the Cavendish family in strengthening the educational resources of the city and of the region. Our trustees have donated the Book of Lismore to UCC in recognition of the impressive academic and curatorial expertise at University College Cork. And as the book of University College Cork, it belongs to everybody, all of those people and places that it passed through for the last 500 years. And to all of those people and all of those places, on behalf of University College Cork, I want to say, Fáilte Criúl Awalia. Welcome everybody to this recorded event from University College Cork. My name is John Fitzgerald. I'm the University Librarian here at UCC and it's my great delight to host a discussion about the Book of Lismore on this, the occasion of its donation by the trustees of the Chatsworth Settlement to University College Cork. I hope that this discussion will inform you, the viewer, about this wonderful late medieval Gaelic manuscript and that you'll become as excited as we are about having it here in its new home in Cork. Uh, we have gathered a number of experts from a range of locations into this virtual room today to share their knowledge and plans for the book with you. But first, given that this may be fresh news to many of you, let me say a little bit about the donation itself. The announcement of this extraordinary gift, um, you know, may come as a surprise, but it has been some time in the making. Uh, the donation is one of many generous acts of friendship uh, and generosity um, between the Cavendish family and University College Cork down through the years, in fact, over almost 150 years. Among the past benefactions have been in the 19th century, uh, the fit out of our wonderful astronomical observatory still operating here on campus and also the help from the Cavendish family with the establishment of the Model Agricultural Institute, later the Model Farm, later the Munster Institute uh, on the main campus. And in 1920, the 10th Duke generously donated a dozen, 12 uh, beautiful old stones, uh, which are still on display at the Stone Corridor here in UCC. And now in 2020, we're pleased to announce this extraordinary and latest gift from uh, the Cavendish family and the trustees of the settlement uh, of the manuscript treasure that is the Book of Lismore. Here with me today from their various bases are Professor Padraig O'Machain, Professor of Modern Irish at UCC, Colette McKenna, Director of Library Services at UCC, Cronon O'Divlin, UCC Library's Head of Research Collections, 
Anna Hoffman and Veronica Biolcati, both UCC PhD students, and Dr. Andrea Palandri of the Dublin Institute, Institute for Advanced Studies. So welcome everybody, and thank you one and all for being here. Paul Drake, uh, may I start by asking you firstly, if you would just to describe briefly what the Book of Lismore is, and then perhaps tell us what it was that first interested you in it. Thanks, Padraig. Thank you, John. Uh, the Book of Lismore is a, first, is a wonderful donation to UCC. It's a, a, an Irish manuscript, a Gaelic manuscript written entirely in Irish. It consists today of just around 400 pages, 200 folios, written on uh, cask in vellum, and created for Finian Macotteriach, of uh, the McCarthy's Ray of, of Carberry uh, West Cork and his wife Kathleen, Kathleen uh, Fitzgerald. It's a big collection of literature, mixture of religious literature, saints' lives, and uh, European uh, literature with a religious flavour, uh, native literature, native tales concerning kingship and, and so forth, and, and stories full of entertaining material um, that cast the light, as it were, on the type of, of literature that appealed to the Gaelic um, upper classes, the Gaelic nobility, at a time when um, Ireland, Gaelic Ireland, was still an autonomous unit at the end of the 15th century. As a native of Lismore, I was introduced first to the book in, in my childhood via uh, our, our, our classes in school and local history. And I've intersected with the book at various periods and times throughout my professional career, um, most notably, I suppose, in, in the lead up to the exhibition at, at UCC of, of the book in 2011, when I was asked to oversee the digitization of the Book of Lismore, the first ever digitization of, of that manuscript from cover to cover, which I was happy uh, to do and which formed part of the exhibition that took place when, when the book was, was displayed here in, in UCC. So I have a personal history and association with the book, John, but that shouldn't detract from or distract from the from this the importance of this magnificent manuscript. It really is, is tremendous and it's a tremendous asset to UCC. Thank you, Padraig. Uh, your personal, unique personal connection to Lismore is, 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 is very, very interesting. And I wonder, could you also say something, Padraig, about, as it were, the book in context? What, what is its distinctive position among the other Gaelic manuscripts of the time. Thank you, John. I think one has to understand in the first place that we don't have very many manuscripts surviving relative to what survives from other traditions in other countries. We have in the region 300, 350 um, manuscripts surviving from before the period of uh, 1600. So any big book from that period stands out, would stand out in any case. But the Book of Elizabeth Moore occupies a unique position in that it belongs to a, a period, uh, particularly a period of literature in Cork, as it were, along the coastline. And it's a, very difficult to imagine today if, if you look at the uh, a coastline, there's still a, a landscape is still um, rural in, in, many, in many respects. Uh, in Ross Green Castle, the home of the O'Mahonies, they were translating uh, European literature, the travels of John Mandeville, which still survives in a manuscript uh, written uh, or associated with Kilcray Abbey. Uh, not very far from, from Cork City, you know. Um, we know that the people who were writing the Book of Lismore, the O'Callanans, were, and, and, and other learned people were translating and um, using uh, medical texts uh, from uh, the continent, from uh, contemporary con um, uh, European uh, medical tradition. Uh, there was a vibrant uh, poetic tradition uh, uh, focused per particularly on the O'Daly family, the, uh, the Irawa, and this was a almost, I think, and I've, I've said it elsewhere, this was a, a proto-university, if you like, in, in a, in a pre-urban Ireland. And it is a tradition, and it's a very nice connection, if you like, that we had this center of learning in West Cork along the coastline, remarkably, remarkably productive. Uh, and it is being reflected, if you like, in the home that the, that the, uh, the book has now found for itself in another center of learning a development, if you wish, from the idea of the university first uh, promulgated uh, in the area where the book was written. Thank you, Padraig. I'll come back to you again 
later. Uh, but I want to turn to Cronon um, now for a moment, if I may. Cronon, you must be excited that this magnificent treasure um, is joining the collection in the Bull Library. And, and, and I suppose, you know, I know you've been researching the provenance and many other aspects of the book, but could I ask you, Cronon, um, firstly, why is it called the Book of Lismore? John, the book uh, was, I suppose, uh, called the Book of Lismore for a very particular reason, and it's very much connected to um, the, the, the story that Paul Rigg is beginning to tell there about the connection with the city of Cork and the scribal community in the city of Cork. It's, it's actually very closely related to uh, that circle of scribes and scholars at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, shortly after the book was uh, uncovered in Lismore Castle, it was given on loan to one Donacha O'Flynn, uh, who was uh, 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 from the north inner city or lived in the north inner city at a place not more than 500 yards from where I'm currently sitting at 50 Shandon Street. And O'Flynn was a, a shop owner, a, a printer, um, a, a collector of manuscripts, and, and one of the individuals involved in that circle of scribes that Podrick uh, mentioned. He was a friend of the scribe Michal Og Olongan, um, who was a well-known uh, Gaelic scribe from the period. And Olongan describes O'Flynn as having enticed the manuscript to the city of Cork with his own good merit and with the help of God. Um, so we know from colophons from uh, uh, Olongan manuscripts that Olongan was transcribing uh, from the Book of Lismore in uh, O'Flynn's uh, premises or in his, his house between December 1815 and January 1816. Uh, we also know that uh, a notice was issued uh, seeking patronage or support for the production of a copy of a voluminous 10th century manuscript in March 1817 that would be completed by Olongan. And indeed, Bishop Murphy of Cork uh, supported the production of texts from the Book of Lismore by Olongan at this time. So um, the, the, uh, during the, the, the time that it was in the possession of these scribes, it, it, the antiquity of the book um, perhaps provided some sense of a lifeline or a connection between this scribal circle and possible patrons such as Bishop Murphy, or indeed perhaps uh, the Devonshires themselves. And uh, it was in this, uh, I suppose, spirit perhaps that O'Flynn added on a blank page within the manuscript four verses uh, in his own hand, in which he describes himself, first of all, as Lia and Lor. Uh, the book healer, but also as Antje Achorwasha, uh, the, the person who, who beautified the book, uh, and also to the right hand side of these verses in the manuscript, he also writes um, August to wash the art, Lore Lassamore, and I name you um, the book of, La of, of Lismore, Lore Lassamore. So um, essentially, O'Flynn was a person who's using the term for the first time. And it is perhaps in the context of trying to attract patronage from the likes of Bishop Murphy, or indeed more likely from the sixth Duke of Devonshire with whom I think he was familiar. Thank you, Cronan. Clearly a well-traveled book um, uh, that could have been called after a number of places uh, that it has passed through. If I can stay with you for a moment, Cronan, perhaps you could also tell us what other rare artifacts um, should the Book of Lismore expect to meet in the vaults of UCC Library? Uh, well, first of all, it, it will not only meet uh, some extraordinary artifacts, but it will get a very, very warm welcome from uh, those uh, artifacts and also from the, the colleagues in the library who will, and, and the scholars who will work very closely with us in researching the manuscript. Um, since the establishment of the university in the 1840s, uh, University College Cork is collected a really extraordinary range of scientific, documentary, and, and cultural artifacts. Our collections ex extend from the 12th century to the 21st century. Um, our oldest uh, manuscript is a fragment from uh, the Schottenkloster at Regensburg um, uh, Monastery, uh, which is a, a direct connection with Irish monks and 
The fragment in itself uh, includes a litany of saints' names which can be directly related um, to this part of Ireland. So um, our oldest documents are very much connected both with the local area but with the wider world. Um, we also have a collection of over 200 Gaelic manuscripts, among which is Kinlay Vallon, a 17th century manuscript, uh, which documents the progress of the Irish Confederate Wars from 1641 to 1647. A really unique document in itself, and it's, it's a kind of a field a notebook, um, account of, of the, the wars uh, transcribed tradition has it by Tarlach O'Malley. And it was perhaps intended uh, as, a, as a, 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 a summary of the events that would provide information for a more detailed account. Um, more recent uh, artifacts within the manuscript tradition that we have is of course the Great Book of Ireland, a really extraordinary 20th century uh, manuscript produced in Dublin between 1989 and 1991. Uh, the collaborative work of 121 artists, 143, uh, poets, nine composers, um, for, for the, the, the benefit of two arts uh, uh, charitable organizations. Um, and of course, we have extensive literary collections uh, the, uh, and, and other cultural collections, such as the Sean O'Reilly papers, uh, the Montague collections, the Frank O'Connor collections, and estate collections from the Munster region, such as uh, the Bantry Estate Collection and the Jefferson and Mallow papers. We have print collections, um, older printed books, of course, but also more modern collections relating to, for example, uh, people like W.E.B. Yeats and the Cantwell collections and the Sean O'Reilly Library. So as I say, um, the manuscript will find a very mm -hmm. welcome home among all of these extraordinary collections and treasures. And we very much look forward to presenting them and working with our colleagues in, in the academic community to bring these resources and these treasures to a wider public. Thank you, Cronan. I'd now like to turn to Colette McKenna, um, the Director of Library Services and the person overseeing the strategic direction and the operation of uh, the library here at the university. Um, and Colette, to ask you, um, you know, a, a very simple question, but, but I, I know one you feel strongly about, and, and that is, you know, what, if you can say what acquiring the Book of Lismore means for you and the library. Thank you, John. I'm delighted that this wonderful book is in UCC Library. I can see the great potential for research, which is already happening. And from my perspective as Director of Library Services, I consider it so important that not just this generation of library users have access, but in particular, future generations. Uh, this inclusiveness and access is a key principle for me and it underpins the recent work that we have uh, been doing on our space master plan, which I know you'll allude to later. So thank you. Thanks very much, Colette. Um, and, and I'd now like to turn to you, Andrea, uh, Andrea Palandri, um, because I know that one aspect of the book is, is, is its breadth of learning um, and that it incorporates European sources as well as native ones. Um, and that nothing better exemplifies this than the Irish translation of Marco Polo, which is unique to this Gaelic manuscript. You completed your PhD on the intriguing topic of Marco Polo and the Book of Lismore here at UCC in 2018, um, Andrea. So would you like to say something about this aspect of the book uh, and maybe touching also on its European sources? Thanks, Andrea. Yes, well, um, first of all, thank you very much. Um, very excited to be on, on this panel and the event is historical and very um, important. Um, yes, well, much like Padraig, I, I too have a sort of a personal connection to the manuscript through the Marco Polo. I was reared in, in, in Venice and my school was called the Marco Polo School. And I uh, often walked by his house, Marco Polo's house in Venice on my way through the city. So as an undergraduate, when I discovered that uh, the Marco Polo, the text of Marco Polo, his travels had been translated to Irish. I was immediately um, drawn to the text, and that's what took me to the, the Book of Lismore because um, it's the only medieval manuscript that contains the text, um, and it's um, it's an adaptation of um, 
Francisco Pipino's Latin translation of the travels, which was written in the, in the 14th, at the beginning of the 14th century. And uh, so the Irish translation takes quite a few liberties from the, um, from the, uh, from the Latin text. And one of these um, differences, uh, it gives us a clue as to perhaps the environment which the translation was made because Francesco Pipino, who was a Dominican friar, is uh, translated and transformed into a Franciscan friar in the Irish adaptation, which um, might point to uh, a connection with the text, uh, a connection of the text with the Franciscan um, friary of Timelig in, in West Cork, uh, only at about 40 or 40 or 50 minutes walk from Kilbritton Castle. Um, so that's what, one of the clues, perhaps, that this uh, Marco Polo was uh, adapted with the Book of Lismore in mind and with the uh, nobility of West Cork in mind, uh, particularly. Thank you, Andrea. We are really fortunate to have your work uh, available to us on this aspect of the manuscript. Anna Hoffman and uh, Veronica Bialcati, um, two PhD students, if I can come to you now as, as actively working uh, on your PhDs here as part of Podrig's Irish Research Council Advanced uh, Laureate Award. Um, I mean, in some ways, given your own backgrounds, you're applying an international prism to the book. So uh, firstly, Anna, perhaps I could ask you to say a little about where you're coming from and, and in terms of your educational background, your recent educational background, and also how access to the Book of Lismore here at UCC will help with your research. I'm from New York and I completed my undergraduate degree in New York City. Um, so now I'm here at UCC pursuing my PhD in the study of the materiality of late medieval Irish manuscripts. Um, so having the Book of Lismore here at UCC now is really such an exciting opportunity for both my specific study and our project as a whole um, and just delving further into the world of Irish manuscripts. So I focus mainly on the vellum um, of these books and the Book of Lismore through forensic and observational analysis to identify key features of the pre-production, production, and post-production of the vellum. So this would include identifying features such as the spine of the animal, um, scrape marks, which would have occurred during production, holes and stains. Um, so for example, with the Book of Lismore, it's really interesting because there are some unique stain patterns that occur um, throughout the book, which seem to have been purposefully applied in the 19th century. Um, they could possibly indicate the application of chemicals or other liquids with the intent of bringing up different features of the text. Um, so this is a specific aspect, which I'm really excited um, to study further now that we have the book here at UCC. Um, so this is just one example of why having the Book of Lismore here will be such um, an important part of both my study and our project as a whole. Thank you, Anna. And Veronica, uh, Veronica Biolcati, can I turn to you also perhaps to ask you to say a little about where you're coming from in terms of your recent education background and also how access to the Book of Lismore here will help you with your particular line of research. Thanks, Veronica. Hello everybody, uh, I am an Italian conservation scientist and I hold a master's degree in science. I'm currently in my joint PhD between Tyndall National Institute and uh, Modern Irish at UCC on the materiality of Gaelic uh, medieval manuscripts. I am focusing specifically on the composition of inks and pigments. The Book of Lismore is not only an invaluable source of information for the history that it conveys, but also it, repre it represents a great opportunity uh, for deepening the scientific research uh, we are performing on Irish book on value. For instance, uh, there is a particular research question about this book that I hope to be able to resolve uh, by using the protocol of analysis we are implemented, we implemented that is the creation of the initial letter of some of the text, whether they are contemporary to the conception of the manuscript or they are later addition in the 19th century. Therefore, I am very much looking forward to study the book of Lismore and I'm, I'm very much excited by the prospect of this manuscript made available for our study at UCC. Thank you. 
Thank you, Veronica, and, and thank you, Anna. It's, it, it's interesting to see how the application of science and technology is, is so relevant um, to, to, to the study, the modern day study of a, an artifact like this. We're now going to listen to a short reading uh, of one of the most uh, famous texts in the Book of Lismore, and that's Ogilvna Shanoruk, or The Conversation of the Old Men, The Conversation of the Elders. Uh, and, and our reading consists of the elegiac opening of this text. Um, the Ogilv is, is a long anthology of the legends of Fionn Makul and the Fianna, and, and this tale occupies a quarter of the manuscript. It, it, it epitomizes the feature of tradition as entertainment that actually permeates uh, the Book of Lismore. And today we're very fortunate that we have another um, UCC student, and that is Ashling Nihunavoin of the MA in Translation Studies Gaelga program. Thank you, Ashling, for uh, your willingness. To, 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 to make this um, rendition. So we'll now listen to uh, Ogilov um, Nishanorach and it is being recited by Ashling Ní Gunnavoin. Ogilov Nishanorach. Er dawrt chaha chomard, agus chaha gaura, agus chaha olorve, agus er ní a húna féine, rus gwilsid irshin in an rungav agus in a mwynav fáherin, gan ar bár rehaam na hórdishin díf, Ach maga o glachfaha da yere nefene. A doin oshin macfing, agus quilte mach krunachin vic ronoin. Er ski alu agus a lavig, agus ga neanar o glach marain ru. Agus hanader an da neanar leach shin. A him live flay foid founds gohig fuchul, go lortiv bona a mach. Ris nubberlu in sentanza. Agus the bother go doch the vanim nach. Um, Refwina nail nona and ehishin. Is an shin a dort quilter rehushin. Mach a anim a ushin. Ka conner na rachomish renoig lay, dirg eachthen hihisa. Nather own er ushin. O nach marin the hanif nefene, agus the hanifainter in vichuil ach tree revon. A doin mishe agus tussa a quilter. Agus kava, an van la agus an van himadi. Ravi equivaed in vicul on shore bava keave xan lashin a four shebos. Thank you, Ashling, for that memorable rendition. Cronon, I'd now like to come back to you, if I may, to probe a little more the curatorial aspects uh, of the book, particularly because I know that you know viewers of this will be interested um, to know if it presents any specific preservation or handling issues. The choice of vellum for a book of this size um, makes a real sort of statement of intent. Um, vellum was chosen um, from the earliest times because of its durability and longevity. And um, it's, it's clearly a statement of intent in terms of uh, preserving the collective contents of, uh, of the book itself for posterity and into the future. Um, we know that the book itself uh, was conceived for a period within uh, the walls of Lismore Castle, and it is, it is, it, it is probable that uh, during that early period it received some uh, moisture damage, and there is observable damage to the fore edge and top edge of the manuscript. The, the vellum has become brittle. However, at some period perhaps in the late 19th century, early 20th century, when the book was rebound. Um, it also uh, it had some quite skillful uh, repair works applied to, that, to the vellum. Um, and as Anna has already mentioned, there is also extensive uh, staining throughout the book where liquids would have been applied probably by scholars of the period to improve the legibility of some of the text. However, this is now oxidized and the text is um, less legible or even in some areas illegible. So these are, I suppose, difficulties. But I, I suppose on the whole, um, the condition of the manuscript is very, very good and has been expertly cared for by the Devonshire family and by the, the Chatsworth trustees. Um, I, I would say that uh, parchment or vellum is a hydroscopic uh, uh, material, and that means it reacts very quickly to changes in humidity and in temperature. So when we're handling 
when we're viewing, when we're presenting the manuscript, it's always presented in a situation where the environmental conditions are controlled. Thank you, Cronon. Uh, I've no doubt that your team and in, in research collections will rise to all of these channels, to, to all of these challenges in their curation for this manuscript. And Padraig, um, if I may, a final question for yourself. Um, the Duke of Devonshire and indeed others have said that the, the academic and curatorial expertise here in UCC um, has been one of the main reasons why the trustees of the Chatsworth settlement have wanted the book to be in Cork. So I, I'm just wondering, you know, what does having access to the book mean for you both in your teaching and in your research? Thank you, John. Well, it, since I came to UCC, we have introduced paleography, that is the, the study of scripts and, and code college, the study of, of early books, uh, into the undergraduate uh, courses uh, in, in the Department of Modern Irish. Um, we use and the resources of the university uh, library quite a lot. And to have access to uh, um, this, this, this living book, this, this, this great uh, store of, of knowledge uh, from uh, Kilbritton uh, in, in, in the late 15th century will enhance those uh, undergraduate experiences immensely because there's nothing like being able to view the actual artifact and have it explained to you uh, in, in context then. At postgraduate level, our interest in uh, the Book of Lismore and in all other manuscripts uh, around the same time uh, continues. Uh, and uh, Dr. Pellandri is, is a very good example uh, of that. And again, to have that available to us for our uh, postgraduate students, uh, as exemplified now by Veronica and by Anna in particular on, on, the, on the Inks and, and, and Skins project, uh, will be uh, invaluable. I may also say that we hope to use the book uh, in, in the context of uh, outreach and adult education going forward. So this is a book for, 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 all, for uh, every aspect you, you, you might like to think of, uh, in, of uh, education. Uh, from undergraduate to postgraduate to uh, outreach and it's just uh, as I'd say just to repeat myself it's, it's tremendous to have it here as, as, as a beacon in, in, in the library. Thank you indeed Padraig, exciting times ahead and indeed I want to say thank you to everybody else um, including um, obviously Padraig O'Machain, Professor Padraig O'Machain, Cronan O'Divlin, Colette McKenna, Dr Andrea Palandri, Anna Hoffman, Veronica Bialkati, and of course, Ashling Nihonavoin. And, and I, I also want to add that, you know, the university has very ambitious plans to develop a treasures gallery in the Boole Library, which will display this and indeed many other artifacts, both from our own and other national and international collections. So we look forward uh, to welcoming all of you back to our campus in person in, in the near future. And, and, and needless to say, we look forward to welcoming students and scholars um, to continue research in and around uh, the Book of Lismore. So thank you for, 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 for tuning in um, and logging in today. I hope that you've enjoyed this discussion um, and thank you for your company. Slán. <laughs>